Connecting with the Lumix G9. The G9 has what is known as a USB 3.0 micro B port. While it's not as versatile as USB type C, it does have the advantage of being able to connect to USB 2 and 3 via a 3.0 micro B cable and to USB 2 via the old style micro B. I'm sure we've all got plenty of those lying around as well as possibly even some power banks that have those cables built in. You can use either of these connections to charge the battery in camera, power the camera, tether the camera, and transfer data to and from the camera. For charging, you can use pretty much any 5 volt device, the brick that came with the camera, a cell phone charger, or, uh, or a power bank. With the camera off, just plug in one of your supplies and you'll see the red light come on indicating the camera is charging the battery. Note that the camera has to be off for the charging of the battery. If you turn the camera on, you'll see the light go out indicating that the battery is no longer being charged. The camera is still receiving power though. To minimize battery depletion, you should be sure that your power supply that you're using is putting out at least 1.8 amps. So now let's take a look at tethering. Panasonic freely provides a pretty nice tethering application for both Mac and Windows called Lumix Tether. I'll leave a link in the description for where you can download it. Once launched on our MacBook Pro here, it's asking us to connect the camera. When you do, you'll see this on the camera's monitor. Select PC Tether and click OK. You'll then see the little remote control icon in the monitor and back on the computer, we see our live control panel open. My only complaint here is that the control surfaces on this thing are huge, like it was designed for a touchscreen interface and not a computer. On a small laptop, things can get uh, pretty cramped pretty fast. With the exception of the mode dial and the drive dial, there are pop-ups for just about any in-camera setting that you can change. So let's open up the live view window here so we can see what the camera is saying. Here you can click on the image to set the focus point. And of course you can change the focus mode. You can't however change the size of the focus point. You have to do that um, using the camera. So let's click on the little camera button here to take a shot. And by default, you'll see a little preview window come up with the captured image. And you can turn that on or off in the settings here. But what if you wanted to open the captured image in a different app, say your editor of choice? Well, on the Mac, you can do that easily using a folder action. First, go into settings and turn off the automatic review. And turn off automatically create subfolders by date. And then you'll probably want to create a custom folder instead of the default pictures folder for where your images are to be copied. I created a folder called Lumix Tether in my pictures folder, which we'll use here. and then save your settings. Now to create the folder action, we're gonna open Automator and select New Folder Action. And we'll choose our Lumix Tether folder. Next, we're going to create a file filter. This is especially useful if you're shooting both RAW and JPEG, or if your editor 
creates XMP files or other sidecar files within the folder of the images when they're open or edited. So here we're going to set a file extension of JPEG. Of course, if you're shooting RAW, you'll want to use the RW2 extension. Next, we're going to add the open finder items and set the application that we want the files to be opened with. And finally, choose Save from the File menu and Name and Save the Service. Now, when we take a picture, the newly created file will open up in our editor of choice, in this case, DxOMark, instead of the default preview window. So let's close PhotoLab here and our Live View window and let's talk a little bit more about Lumix Tether. This app appears to have been developed using the Qt cross-platform frameworks and not a lot of love has been shown for things like keyboard shortcuts to help manage windows and deal with the crowded interface. And the fact that the usual file and windows menus are missing uh, means that there's no way to use the system to assign keyboard shortcuts for them. So I've used Keyboard Maestro to create some. And I'll leave a link in the description where you can download these. I'll also leave a link to the Keyboard Maestro free trial and a 20% off coupon for those of you who've never used it. The four I created are to toggle live view, uh, shutter release, minimizing the control window, and closing a window. They are in action. Command L opens the live view window. Command L again closes it. Command M toggles the settings panel on the control window. Command S is the shutter release. And Command W closes the front window. And finally, let's have a look at data transfer. You have two other choices when connecting to a computer via USB. One of these is PictBridge, but I can't imagine anybody wanting to print directly from the camera to a printer. So we'll skip that and we'll go directly to the PC storage option. When you select this, any SD cards in the camera will be mounted as volumes on the computer. At this point, you can open them, copy the files to wherever you need them to go. But one thing to keep in mind before you shut down the camera or turn off the computer is to make sure that you unmount these volumes first. Otherwise, there's a possibility that you'll corrupt data on the cards. So that's pretty much it here for connecting via USB. Stay tuned for episode two all about Wi-Fi. And thanks for watching.